Welcome to the uh, Major Series Silver Crown Primer. Uh, my name is Wayne Hutchison. I'm one of the members of the Competition Committee here at the Major Series. And with the uh, upcoming race number three of the 2018 season being the Silver Crown car at Phoenix, and with most of the membership probably not being all that familiar with the Silver Crown, we thought it best if we put some together a little bit of a primer to help people uh, you know, adapt or get uh, comfortable with the car a little quicker. It is a bit of a handful. Um, basically, going to go through three little pieces here. We'll start out with a little bit of an overview of the car. Then we'll go into the garage for a little bit, take a look at some of the settings there, that, uh, especially some of the ones that are unique to the Silver Crown. And then we'll go out on track and uh, take a look at some of the things that you can only see when you're in the car. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll finish up with a little uh, uh, information on where you can find some more, more setup information, that kind of thing. Uh, so, without further ado, um, on screen in front of you is a beautiful looking uh, USAC Silver Crown car, Speedway version. Um, you can tell it's Speedway version because it has a nose cone and some side pods to help with the aerodynamics. Uh, this car, uh, very lightweight, 1,600 pounds dry weight, uh, 2,100 pounds when full of fuel, so it holds a lot of fuel, 820 horsepower small block uh, uh, V8 engine with uh, burning methanol so uh, power to weight ratio um, very high uh, has a locked rear axle so there's no diff settings it's like driving a go-kart in that respect or an indie car on an oval track two-speed gearbox um, we'll come back to that later because uh, even though it's two speeds you probably don't want to use more than one most of the time uh, and it's uh, as you can see, it, uh, for the amount of horsepower and the lightweight, it uh, tends to have um, not much tire on it. So that makes it uh, throttle control um, pretty important. This car is raced um, in the official series, basically every configuration of oval track on the service, from the small uh, half mile and under um, paved short tracks all the way up to Indianapolis, everything in between. Um, it's a, a ton of fun. It's a small community, but uh, the race is... Uh, are uh, really close, really fast. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So, that's with that. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, some of this, the garage settings for this car. We'll go into the garage here. Um, don't pay attention to the actual settings here. This is a setup I was using this week at Homestead in the official series. Uh, may or may not be uh, appropriate for Phoenix, um, but anyway, it, uh, we'll just we'll step through here and take a look at. Uh, at what the different settings are and uh, and what you can do to, to help get this car dialed in. So you've got uh, on the tire page here, it's a very simple garage, just two pages, tires and chassis. Um, not nearly as many settings as some of the cars that we uh, drive in this series. Tires page, very simple, you've got your, your cold pressures. Um, they range from as low as 10 PSI all the way up to 30. Um, Realistically, uh, race conditions, you're probably going to be around the middle. Um, kind of uh, work that out to you, what you uh, uh, like best. But somewhere probably in the 16 to 24 range is where you're going to end up uh, in race conditions. Uh, with short qualifying runs of uh, two to four laps, you're probably going to want to bump that up a little higher um, to get a little bit more uh, pressure and heat in the tires uh, for qualifying. A couple things that are unique to this car uh, on the tire page here are the stagger. You have a front stagger on the right, under the right front tire here, and you have a uh, rear stagger. And basically, stagger is the difference in the uh, circumference of the tires, um, right side being larger than the left side. Uh, on the rear, it's very clear. This is not that uncommon. Um, some other cars in the service have this, where you want to make the uh, right side tire a little bit bigger than the left side because it is a locked rear end. And um, if you don't make the right side tire a little bit bigger, you will scrub speed and or lose traction with one of the tires uh, throughout through the corners. So you have to uh, set that uh, to what's appropriate for the track. Um, it ranges from zero inches of stagger all the way up to four. Uh, four is probably never used anymore with the current tire model. Um, my recommendation is start around one and play with there from there um, with this car. Uh, front stagger, um, 
similarly, um, again, the right front tire will be a little bit bigger than the left than the left front. What this does, um, what iRacing will tell you, if you hover your mouse over it, the, the bottom they'll say, hey, uh, more front stagger equals more understeer during braking. And that's kind of true, um, all else being equal. Um, if you increase the front stagger, what you're going to do <coughs> is increase your cross weight. <coughs> And if you increase cross weight, obviously the car is a little bit tighter, and it will it will push a little more in the corners. Um, but if you increase the front stagger and decrease the cross weight at the same time, back to where you had it before, what will happen is that the the car will pull to the left a little more with more stagger, and that can be um, very helpful um, under braking um, if you want the car to to turn left a little bit harder um, when you touch the brakes. So you can play around with that, come find something that's uh, comfortable there to get the uh, the turn in that you want. Um, you can't really go too far wrong. So that's it for tires. Really, really pretty simple. Uh, I guess one thing remaining the on the temperatures, especially the right rear temps, um, you're going to find that the center temperature is probably always going to be a little higher than the outside temperatures. Um, just the nature of this tire model for this car. It is a new tire model version seven. But uh, it's it's almost impossible to get a nice tire temperature um, curve across there, like you would see on some of the other cars. It's, it's almost always going to be a little hotter uh, in the middle. So just uh, don't be surprised when you see that. If we move on to the chassis settings, uh, what we have here, very simple, not very many settings, right? Some of them are very familiar to everybody. You have your steering box ratio. You can range that has a huge range on it from like four to sixteen or something. Basically determines how quick the front tires turn relative to how to how much you've turned your wheel. Just find something that's comfortable for you. Steering offset. A lot of other cars have that too. That's just you know how what position you want the wheel to be in as you're going down the straightaway basically. And front brake bias again. Um, brake bias. Most cars have that adjustability. Um, just put position that where you feel best for uh, for stopping in the pits, getting on the pit road, when you tap the brakes if you do for to avoid accidents, that kind of thing. Um, the um, that's also in car adjustable. If you set up a, a buttons or a dial for that, yeah, it's one of the two in car adjustments you can make with the Silver Crown. We move down and look at uh, the the corners of the car: the left front, right front, left rear, right rear. Uh, you have your basic springs. And shocks, um, camber caster towing adjustments. We all know what those do. Um, you have a range here. I think it's like 250 to 1,000 pounds of uh, uh, spring rate, and um, you'll play around anywhere in there. Typically, on bigger ovals with higher banking, you're going to use um, stiffer spring rates, especially since those higher those higher speed ovals. Uh, you, you tend to want to uh, the uh, aerodynamics nice and stable and keep the uh, the nose cone off the surface of the track that kind of thing so you tend to run higher spring rates there uh, maybe that's why I have thousand pound spring rates up here for homestead where it's a, it's not quite a full full throttle all the way around track but it's pretty close in the high groove the uh, here at uh, at Phoenix you'll probably end up running spring rates that are lower than a thousand maybe not all the way down to 250 but lower than a thousand would be probably where I would start um, the shocks or dampers, as some people call them, uh, there is no bump adjustment on these. The bump is fixed. It is what it is. You can adjust the rebound. Um, so basically, they, these rebound settings control, they don't control how much weight will transfer from one corner to another, but they'll control how quickly it transfers. Uh, with a a rebound stiffness of zero here, that's the minimum resistance, so the, the weight's coming up, that, in this case this left front corner here, um, the weight's going to come up, or the, that corner is going to come up as quickly as it can, um, transferring weight to the back or to the right rear. Um, if you stiffen that up, and I think it'll go all the way up to 25 or something like that, um, that will, the same amount of weight will still transfer, it will just take longer for it to transfer. So these are adjustments you would make um, fine-tuning adjustments to um, improve the, the weight transfer of the car on initial entry into a corner and then on the exit of the corner. It doesn't have a whole lot of uh, 
of say in what happens um, in the middle of the corners. Uh, so anyway, yes, the uh, what you want to do is um, just adjust those as you see fit based on feel. Um, one of the unique settings on the uh, Silver Crown is the weight jacker down here. It's uh, adjustable uh, minus 10 to plus 10, and basically what it does is um, it's the same thing as, as adjusting the shot collar offset or adjusting the right height in the right rear corner. And uh, that's in-car adjustable while you're driving, and you'll probably want to set up buttons or, or a, a dial for that because the, uh, you will want to use it during the race. Basically, the, uh, the more negative you go, the more it uh, reduces the cross weight and loosens the car up. As you can see, as I go down here, the, the cross weight is, is decreasing, and as I increase the, the weight jacker, the cross weight is increasing. So, um, unlike the Indy car, where the weight jacker has to be set at zero to leave the garage, um, with the Silver Crown, you can set it wherever you want and leave the garage. It, it won't, uh, won't throw up a red flag. Um, good place to start, though, is zero, obviously. Get the car dialed in the way you want it, and then have some adjustment both up and down. Uh, the reason you want to use the weight jacker in the car is that the car is has a lot of weight of fuel on it. Um, if you fill a tank up, it's 500 pounds of fuel, and that fuel is right behind the driver, kind of sitting on the rear axle, more or less. Um, so as that fuel burns off, the rear of the car gets lighter um, a lot quicker than the front does, and uh, tends to tighten up. It, it tends to tighten up the the, the car. So um, you will find that uh, you'll want to loosen the car up most likely. Um, as the run goes on, there may be a period of time in there early in a run where the car will get looser before it gets tighter um, as the tires heat up. So you might want to be able to uh, increase the weight jack or tighten the car up for a while and then start loosening it up again. Um, so that's just, it's there and it's in car adjustable. So I highly recommend that you set that up and use it, play with it, get to understand it. Um, it, it does make a big difference. Uh, fuel, you can go anywhere from 0 to 75 gallons. Um, you get about a little over 2 miles per gallon with this car at full throttle. 200 mile race here at Phoenix, so you're going to need uh, you know close to 100 gallons, 90 to 100 gallons somewhere. Tank only holds 75, so guess what? There's going to be at least one pit stop. Uh, rear end ratio, you have a plethora of choices for rear end ratio in this car. You can run in any of them. Um, I would strongly recommend for those new to the car that you start out with a ratio that's lower numerically. Uh, helps to kill some of the torque and will maybe get you more laps in with less spinning out. And as you get more comfortable with the car, start increasing the numerical value of the ratio up to the point where you're you're hitting the proper revs on the straightaway. Uh, this car revs out at uh, roughly 8,000 RPM. And uh, you want to get close to that in the draft. Um, probably 77, 7,800 by yourself on the straightaway. Uh, but to start out with, that would be um, that could be a handful for, for a lot of people. So kill some of the torque by using the, uh, the lower numerical ratio. Uh, and that's basically it for the garage. It's a very simple car. Um, I think what we'll do now is, uh, is load up and go out on the track, take a look at a couple of the things that uh, you can see in the car that are a little bit different than, uh, than other cars. Uh, I'll use the same setup and we'll just go out. And it probably won't be ideal for the track, but that's okay. So we're in the car here. Um, you can't see much uh, off to the sides. I've got those my side monitors blacked out here. For this uh, video but uh, what you can see is the dash this is what I see in my car um, because of the uh, field of view I use on my triple monitor setup and uh, so you can't really see any of the uh, controls or any of the dash instruments on the dash there aren't that many to begin with so it's not that big of a deal um, but you can if I uh, I raise the uh, height of the dash up here. You can see some of you will see this stuff depending on how you've got your, your system set up. You've got a tachometer, digital tach in front of you in, in hundreds, so it'll go you know from 10 to 80, maybe maybe more. 
and uh, over to your left you see the big yellow um, light there uh, when the caution comes out that light will flash yellow um, so if you see that light flashing yellow it's not an overheat or anything like that it's caution light um, as far as rpm goes this, this engine uh, is pretty hard to blow up it's not impossible um, if you over rev for too long or if you have some front end damage the radiator is inside the front nose cone uh, you can overheat the engine and blow it up um, i think i've i've blown it up maybe once in four years of official races so um, it's pretty reliable i wouldn't worry about it too much so let's uh go out on track here just pull my z1 dashboard in so i can see what's going on uh, we do have some adjustments here like i said with the uh, the brake bias if you adjust the brake bias you can see the it's adjustable from 50 is the low and you can go up from there uh, you also have adjustment in car for weight jacker I had it at zero in the garage if you remember and you can dial it in from minus 10 to plus 10 on the fly so that's uh, kind of handy it is a two-speed transmission first gear is really really low probably tops out around 50 mile an hour and you will want to use it only when leaving the pit stall. Never, ever, ever, ever any other time. Do not ever use it for restarts. Do not ever downshift into first gear on the track, not even coming into your pit stall. Um, you will just launch yourself into outer space. You'll blow the engine. You'll, all kinds of strange things will happen because it's just such a low gear. But it is handy for getting out of the pits. Okay, so let's go out on the track now. Um, first thing you can do, um, that homestead setup, probably not the best thing to use. Uh, if you want to start out um, for new drivers, what you can do is just go into the iRacing setups in the garage, grab a Phoenix, um, take a look at it. You'll notice uh, fairly high um, tire pressures and fairly high front spring rates relative to the rear. So just you know, by looking at those things, you can see this, this uh, setup is uh, going to be a little bit tight, but uh, I think that's unintentionally to make it a little easier to drive. Um, when you're first learning, it's always good to do laps and not to uh, do pirouettes. So I've got that loaded up. Um, go down track here, do some laps, show you guys a few things uh, about the Silver Crown and about Phoenix. Z1 back in place here. So uh, we go into first gear to take off from the pit stall. Before you know it, you're in second gear. You go down the track. You enter uh, between turns uh, two in the kink here. There's a dog leg on the back straight going into turn three. Very flat turn three, very little banking. Um, you get dump out of four onto the front straight. So the front straight, long straight here, you go down front straight away the turn one turn one has the most banking but it's the tightest corner so you, you want to get to the bottom and then f obviously fade back up near the wall on the exit um, cut the dog leg as close as you can into three being so flat uh, you have to get off the throttle quite a bit to get it to go in go around come off the bottom stay above that white dotted line there uh, you get below that it gets really sketchy because um, it's it's flat and bumpy and um, can really upset the car, turn you around. Um, it's a pretty simple track, one mile around, so you know, laps in the 25, 26 second range, most likely. When you're coming up to a start, you'll be coming up here at uh, you know, 50, 60 mile an hour, whatever pace speed is here at Phoenix. And right around here, you, you know, you're know, you going to want to get on it. You get on it, though, you step on the full throttle, and the car doesn't really pick up speed very quickly. Uh, it has um, only one speed, basically. You're stuck in second gear, right? And uh, you're not running uh, a really high numerical rear end gear, so it doesn't pick up speed very quickly. That's great. It, it works fine. You, there's no problem you get going. As long as everybody does that, um, there won't be any accordion effect, rear end, uh, rear ending of anybody. But not everybody will do that. Some are going to be set up a little different. So you come up here to the start. What you want to do is step on the throttle and then 
uh, ride the clutch a little bit, slip it a little bit to get the, the revs up so that you can get a little bit better launch. Um, you really need a clutch set up to do that. I, th I haven't tried it with a button, but you can set up it with a button, um, a paddle, um, a clutch pedal itself obviously would be best um, to let you modulate the, the engagement point, keep the RPM in whatever range you want. Uh, it's only a, for a second or two, but it, it does make a, a fairly big difference. Um, so there's that. Right here, coming off of two, is a um, very um, usual spot for uh, incidents. Either cars getting together or cars spinning to the inside. Same thing here off of, of four. It gets kind of loose up here. Cars will often spin to the outside here. Some will try to catch it and overcorrect into the outside wall and pile up a bunch of people. Um, especially if you get if you have somebody on your outside here and you have to pinch it down off of two. Um, it, it's pretty easy to get loose like that, um, even in this setup. And if you, you get down on the apron down here, you can do it. If you try to dive under somebody, um, hope you don't do it, but it's kind of flat and really upsets the car, as you can see. <laughs> Um, not the best place to be unless you're trying to avoid a wreck. The uh, track isn't all that complicated to drive. You have to be careful here as you're going down and then fading back up that there's not somebody on the outside of you. Um, you can run up high here in three and four. It's pretty easy to run in the middle lane. Get a good run off of off four. Um, you can get a better run than the guys on the inside, obviously, because they're you know, have to modulate the throttle a little more. And in here, you can run up in second lane, even third lane if you need to. But second lane will work and get you a run off of turn two here. You often have to go a little higher in the dog leg here um, in order to make the pass into three, but uh, it can be done. Let's see if I can get it loose here coming off four. So you can get these kinds of spins. Uh, where you, the back end breaks free. Uh, the best thing to do with this car is so light uh, that uh, you just let off the throttle and and correct it. Um, drive out of the steer out of the the um, slide as best you can. Um, if you keep the, your foot on the throttle, you might be able to get out of it, but it also might just all of a sudden catch and snap, and you'll be in the outside wall. So that's not ideal, obviously. Uh, coming in for pit stops, at Phoenix. You want to come in off four here. It's a very short entrance. You got to get down to pit speed, and then uh, cruise down pit lane. One thing that's unique about the uh, Silver Crown, um, you don't want to take too much fuel. So I'm going to turn fuel off. Um, and, but oftentimes, it's oval tracks guys will think they can take two tires, the two outside tires, especially if it hasn't been very long since their last pit stop. Uh, that doesn't really work with the Silver Crown because when you're in the pits, they jack up the front of the car first, replace the front tires, then go around and jack up the rear. So two tires and four tires take the same amount of time. So you really um, either take no tires or four tires. As you can see, they're jacking up the front of the car here. Um, it takes a little while to change all four tires, probably in the neighborhood of 25 seconds. Um, as, and as you know, a lap is about 25 or 6 seconds, so um, it takes about a lap. Uh, under green, obviously, you're going to lose that lap. Under caution, uh, not, not likely, um, unless you're at the tail end of a long pack. But we won't have uh, huge long packs in the majors. Get back out. you got to be careful getting out of the pits uh, that you don't um, run into somebody trying to get the inside of the dog leg there as they're coming around at speed. Uh, another thing, I can't tell, I don't know if you can see it on the screen here, but after a few laps, this, your visor will tend to get a little dirty. The oil, rubber, dirt from the track, cars in front of you. You really need to set up a uh, a button for the visor tear off. I think it's Alt-T by default, um, but uh, sometimes it's helpful to have a button on your wheel or button box where you can just push and, and clear the screen off like that. Um, 200 lap race, it'll get really, really dirty. It'll be really hard to see. Um, I th think that is about all we have on track here. Um, we'll move on to the next segment. Uh, 
um, if you're looking for some more information, some more setup help, or setups themselves, uh, you can, there's a couple places you can look. There are a bunch of Silver Crown setups loaded to iRacing Setup Sync. If you can get that to work, it's kind of um, iffy sometimes. Uh, all those same setups are available in the forum. Um, there is a Silver Crown forum that uh, on the iRacing service that um, get my Z1 out of the way here. So down here under Oval Racing, there's a Silver Crown forum. You can see you go in there and there's some some thre threads on setups, 2018 season one. We haven't raced po uh, Phoenix in this season, so we did race it in season four of last year. So if you look in there, you'll find setup for Phoenix or you go back to season three, we raced the, uh, the newer version in season three, um, but there's also uh, setups in there. Um, Go in, you'll see. I think the very first one here is uh, Phoenix Race and Qual setups that I used anyway and shared with the with the community um, back in September. Um, which is not probably not a bad starting point for a lot of people. Um, that's it. I don't uh, don't have anything else to share with you. Good luck in your race. Um, just take your time with the car when you first get into it. Uh, get comfortable with it. Um, and uh, good luck. See you on the track.